Hello and welcome once again to this Dogbert Gaming Support production. I am your host, Dogbert, and we proudly present Cosmic Crucible Preseason Run 3 Memorial Day Weekend Trial 3. This is the third and final day of this Cosmic Crucible run. Before we get into it anymore, we need to take a word from our sponsors. My first strike force, give us our money and get fucked, commanders. And by the book by new book by Joseph Vaughn, stop masturbating and start living. How to go from fappy to happy and overcome any advice or addiction. Available on Amazon now. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look and see what happened yesterday. Dogbert uh, had an overwhelming victory over Stitches, getting 23 Tribunal points, and heading into a one-in-one -in -one situation. And Catbert continued his winning streak, going into his, winning his last five battles now with a 10-point win. Uh, way to go, uh, Catbert, but as you will see, he has his work cut out for him tonight. Mordak it will not be featured at all tonight due to the tremendous time commitment that is needed by Marvel Strike Force, or I should say, demanded. Mordak has decided to retire. We are sorry to see you go, Mordak, but we understand. So, now let's take a look at the matches up tonight. We have Dogbert coming in at 15.4 million TCP. He will be going against Cable at 20.7 million TCP. This will be a very big punch up for Dogbert. He hasn't had to face this yet so far in this Cosmic Crucible. We'll see how he handles this. In room uh, one for him, he'll be facing a Darkhold team with Doctor Strange. Original Doctor Strange. A smaller Darkhold team, but he still needs to respect it. It is still Darkhold. In room two, we have the Web Warriors with a, go a Gear 16 Ghost. Everybody else appears to be around Gear 15, 14. And in the third room, he will be going against the Young Avengers. Uh, pretty well built up Young Avengers uh, there. We see interesting to see how he handles that with the Defenders uh, buff there where it uh, flips your defense up. In room 4 it is the standard Marauders with Madeline Pryor. We know he can handle that. We have seen that happen many times. Room 5 it looks like we have the infamous Wakandans again. Uh, most of them at gear 13 except for Shuri. We know he can handle that. And finally, last but not least, Room 6 is loaded with a Gear 16 Misty Knight, Gear 16 Noom, and Gear 16 Shang-Chi. If that wasn't enough, it also has Minerva and Silver Surfer. That will be an interesting room to see how he tackles that one. And our other match tonight, Catbert at 12 million TCP, will be taking on Weedstar at 15.4 million TCP. Yet another punch-up for Catbert. But he has overcame them in the past, can he overcome this one tonight? If we look at the defense, we start out with the only Avengers in room 1. I don't believe, I don't remember if uh, Catbird has faced Young Avengers, a whole team like that. Room 2, we have a smaller Wakandans. Oh, uh, he has faced Wakandans before and has been over able to overcome them. And room 3, we have Infinity Watch. With three Gear 16, a 7-7 seven, seven Gamora at Gear 16, a 6 Red, 7 Yellow Phyla Bell, and a 6-6 six, six Adam Warlock, all Gear 16, along with the Nebula and Moon Dragon. That is a very heavy defense room there. In room 4 we have the standard Marauders again with Madeline Pryor. Smaller Madeline Pryor, but this would be interesting to see how he handles it with a smaller Strife as well. In room 5 we have the Web Warriors, Gear 16 Scarlet Spider and a Gear 16 Ghost Spider. Let's see how he does that. That is in the Cosmic Catastrophe room. No Cosmic characters allowed there. And finally in room 6 it is just a larger Heroes for Hire. We know they are not very good on defense in Cosmic Crucible. That should be an easy one for him to pick up. Now with all this said, let's head into our action. We're going to head right into Catbird. We joined Catbert in progress as he has uh, decided to take on that room 3, big infinity watched room. Let's see how he handles it here. He has brought in Morgan, Emma, Le Emma 
uh, Scarlet Witch and the Eternals. And it goes right off with the big blast from Icarus trying to clear out some of those evades. Cersei clearing off those negative effects and uh, knocking them down. Going for the Scarlet Witch extend there. Probably just looking to get some damage out there and get clear some of those buffs. Yeah, but with Safeguard out there, he doesn't get to clear anything right now. And here comes the special from Icarus. He appears to be targeting Nebula, and Nebula has died her first time. He now has a stun available, and he chooses to stun that big Gamora. And here comes Adam Warlock with an ability block on Scarlet Witch, of all people. Oh, Morgan Le Fay gonna reset that turn meter bar now. And looks like he's going back to Nebula once again with his Icarus hitting that basic. And Nebula is gone! He has eliminated Nebula already. That is a huge loss for that Infinity Watch. That is a lot of damage. As now he is targeting Philavel and he uses Scarlet Witch to heal up. Now I think we know why he brought in Scarlet Witch. It was just for that heal. And here comes Adam Warlock with his stun. He goes after Scarlet Witch again, and he does hit Icarus on the second stun. Valavel clearing off all the debuffs, and here comes Moon Dragon now as they start to get going. Using Morgan Le Fay to hit that Valavel again. The stun is off, and here comes Cersei with a basic off to Valavel. And Gamora one-shotting Cersei. Oh my God! And there goes Morgan as well. Looks like Catbird is just going to play through in this one. Might just take the loss and the loss of the team, but he has knocked them down. It might be a cleanup. And he just does the big blast from Icarus, just trying to do as much damage as possible. Can't quite do anything to this team, though. He knew that it was going to be a tough room. We didn't expect to see a loss there, but he did knock out Nebula. That might make it easier for our cleanup later. And it looks like he is going to go right back in, and he's going to bring in his own Infinity Watch. Now that their Infinity Watch has been weakened, this will be a double tap. It'll be interesting to see if this costs him the match. He does have the advantage here, though, against this team now, having a Nebula. His Infinity Watch isn't as big, that's why he's been his plan all along, just weaken them. He is going after Moon Dragon right now with his Gamora. Uh, Moon Dragon is weaker than that Phylavel. Looks like he is using the ability block on Moon Dragon just for the damage. He has to deal with his, that Adam. By Lavelle going now, clearing off those debuffs with her special as he continues to work on that Moon Dragon. And it's time for his Moon, moon Dragon knocking back that Gamora speed bar, trying to keep her sidelined as long as possible. We saw that how much damage she can put out. And with his Gamora, he goes for that uh, theft proof and gets it. And, and that does it for Moon Dragon. Things looking up now for Catbert. He goes for the stun on Gamora, and he does land it, and does not get it on Adam Warlock, though. Uh, it's got to be disappointing. You'd love to get that second stun. Looks like he's going for the ultimate on Phyla Vale. Knocks her into the yellow. Nebula taking her down into the red, and there she goes. She dies from the bleeds. Here comes Phylavel, working on that big Gamora. And that is the first death for that Gamora. Nebula with a basic raid into her. And here comes his own Gamora, knocking out the Gamora. All that's left is to clean up Adam Warlock now.
And Adam Warlock dies once. Healing back up a little bit with Moon Dragon, trying to get some kind of points back, but he may have already lost this Crucible. He does fully to clear the room though, so that is good for some of those uh, Crucible credits that are so valuable. On. He still has to deal with those web warriors, and it looks like he's just going to go take on the heroes for hire. Let's see if he goes with the standard Weapon X, which destroys the heroes for hire both in war and in Cosmic Crucible. Yes, that is what he is going for. Alright, so we have a standard team here. This should be an easy victory for Catbert. Starting right off with that Lady Death Strike special, trying to knock Shun Chi back, but he goes so quickly. Oh, that ability block time, he looks to ability block Misty Knight. Misty Knight already down into the yellow. As Wolverine getting his special off, putting out a lot of bleeds. Here comes Sabertooth, this time going for Shun Chi. Colleen Wing is already gone. Iron Fist dies. Here comes Silver Samurai. Stunning Shang-Chi. Putting the ultimate from Lady Deathstrike onto Shang-Chi. Here comes the ultimate from Omega Red to end the match. Well done, Cat Burped. Let's see where he heads to next. He still has four more rooms to clear. I uh, hope he can shake off that uh, loss in room 3 at the, rate, the beginning, and now he is going against the, wet, the bigger web warriors inside of room 5. He doesn't want to use anybody who's cosmic here. And it looks like he is going to go for a death pool. I think we're going to see Dildo and Hoodie as well. Yes, it looks like we will be seeing Dildo and Hoodie. He's also bringing in Shuri for that uh, defense up and energy generation. There is Hoodie, and he is bringing in Shang-Chi as well to help out. As we start right off, he gets the defense up from Shuri, generating some energy. Here goes Hoodie, landing some blinds and a bunch of debuffs. Only one he didn't seem to land on was Ghost Spider. Chung Chi coming in to kick everybody now, knocking some of them down into the yellow. Looks like he is going after Scarlet Spider now. He does eliminate it with Dildo. And there goes Spider Punk. Well, he has a choice here. He is going to go after OG Spider Man with a hoodie. Oh, spider uh, did dodge, but ended up getting the assist. Looks like it's time for Shang Chi. He goes for the special, eliminating Spider Punk, and M Death Pool eliminates Miles. So just uh, Ghost Spider left. She had a, a fade up, so he just went with the basic from a dildo. As Ghost Spider continues to dodge, what are you going in there with a basic? It was an interesting choice, he brought the full new warriors in, because uh, Deathpool is cosmic and not getting a turn. But she did go off whenever somebody dies. Well done, Catbert there, you knocked him out. That was the biggest team remaining. Oh, he is left with the Marauders, the Young Avengers, and Wakanda. He is going to take on the Young Avengers here. Let's see what he uses here. This should be an interesting uh, look, given what he has left. It looks like he's going to bring in the Astonishing X-Men. This is going to be an interesting choice. And it looks like it will be the full X-Men as well. They are much more powerful though, so this might uh, do it. Go. 
Squirrel go going very fast. Looks like he's going to use the special on Bishop to go right after Ms. Marvel. And he uses just a basic off a of beast trying to clear out some of those debuffs. Uh, buffs, sorry. <laughs> Bishop taking a beating from the Young Avengers right now. As Kate Bishop going off. And here comes Iceman, looking to slow them down. And Avengers definitely are not a team that you want to sleep on. Yep, here comes Kitty Pride, got it landing to disrupt on Ms. Marvel. That will give him a little bit of a breather. And it looks like he's going for a stun onto Squirrel Girl. Yes, he is trying to knock out the healing of this team. And here comes the big ultimate blast from Bishop taking out uh, Ms. Marvel. That'll give him some uh, turn meter. And now Beast with the heal knocking out Squirrel Girl as well. Let's see what he's going to do here. He looks like he is going for America Chavez. She is the lowest. And he ended up landing a stun with Iceman. Oh, Kate though landing those blinds. That's going to be an issue. Uh, Kitty Pride does not have a blind. She goes with the uh, Lockheed knocking out America Chavez now. Just going with the basic on Jubilee. The ultimate from Bishop now. Uh, sorry, that was Beast. Uh, special from uh, Bishop. I see he is aiming for Echo. Kitty Pride with a basic. And there goes Jubilee landing the death blow, which put the, the uh, blind that Echo had onto Kate Bishop. Incoming Iceman sliding right in there with a basic. Beast with a chance to heal up the team and get some more efficiency points back. And looks like it will be Bishop finishing off Kate Bishop for the win. Nicely done, the Axemen taking down the Young Avengers. And as we head into the final two rooms, it is just Wakanda and the uh, Marauders where you don't want speed up that looks like he is bringing in Kestrel looks like it is going to be a secret Avengers team question is will he bring in no he has brought in Squirrel Girl as the fifth. Instead of Nick Fury, Nick Fury does spawn with speed up. That would be a negative in this room. Squirrel Girl does give him an extra dispel and cleanse as well as a heal. And we start right off with Mystique hitting Sharon Carter with Kestrel. Oh, ultimate from Kestrel knocking out Stroyf in one shot. It's time for Captain Sam. He does his ultimate, getting that speed bar, not speed up. And it looks like Maria Hill is bringing out those troopers to go right after Minister Sinister Sinister. And he goes for the uh, stun from Sharon Carter, landing it on Emma Frost. And there is Squirrel Girl removing those debuffs. Sinister going for a clone of Kestrel unsuccessfully. Looks like it's back to Mr. Sinister now with the shield troopers. And here is Kestrel with her special going right down at Nemo Frost, knocking out Mr. Sinister. It might be time to say goodbye to Mystique as well. And there he is, Emma. Well done. Well done, Catbird. Knocking out that Marauder team. So, last but not least, it is the Wakandans in room 2. Not a very big Wakandans. Shouldn't have any issues. It looks like he is going to bring Hela in. We haven't seen Hela really, really used at all during this Cosmic Crucible. He has removed uh, Carnage. And it looks like he's going to bring in Andy Venom to do a very weird mashup team between Silver Surfer, Doom, Symbiote Spider-Man, Andy Venom, and Hela. He looks like he is just going for the sledgehammer per, uh, method of killing this team off. The 
They seem to be hard on anti-venom right now. Using Greg to go right into uh, Black Panther, but that gives him a kill and gets him going. And here comes uh, Silver Surfer, looking for an ability block on M'Baku, and he lands it. Uh, here is a basic from Symbiote Spider-Man, putting that defense down onto Black Panther. They go after Anti-Venom once again and do finish him off. But the big boom from Doom knocking out both Black Panther and Killmonger. Spreading, trying to spread that debuff. Only landed on the quay. Here comes Silver Surfer, knocking out Minbaku and Akwe. It's down to just Shuri. Puts it on auto. This one's done. Up oh, here comes Doom with his ultimate, healing them back up. Bid lose a lot of points here in that victory. Lost 400 there. Lost Anti Venom on this one. Does not look good for Catbert. Let's see. Go look at his final score. 49,762, definitely not a very good score. We'll have to see if Weedstar has any issues with Catbird's defense. With all this said, let's head on over and see how Dogbird is faring. As we join Dogbird, we can see that his opponent Cable has already gone and put up an impressive score of 50,136. Dogbird will need to be on his game tonight and take out these teams efficiently. Looks like he is going to start right off with that big stacked room in room 6. And it looks like it will be his infinity watch he'll be bringing in. He does have a pretty decent size infinity watch here, including a gear 16 Phylavel. This might be enough to take them out. Don't forget, there is no speed manipulation, so even if Doom gets his ultimate off, he will not get the turns that he normally gets. A Silver Surfer, though, will increase his speed since that is increasing his base speed, not the speed bar. Shang Chi's uh, special abil uh, ultimate ability also will not remove speed bar. As we go, he's going right into Shang-Chi with Gamora. And there goes Shang-Chi, but Minerva is standing back there. She could res him. Silver Surfer missing, thanks to the evades that Nebula put out with her ultimate. And Adam Warlock going right into Doom, putting the ability block on him. By Lavelle special right down the middle, as he continues to go right after Doctor Doom. Looks like he's just going to use the basic for Moondragon, going to save that heal in case he needs it, and Dr. Doom is dead. Minerva does res up Shang-Chi though, as he comes out with his ultimate. And there is the uh, special for Nebula, putting up those counterattacks as here comes Silver Surfer. Looks like Gamora is going to go right into Silver Surfer, knock him into the yellow. Got the assist from Nebula, plus the ISO attack killing off Silver Surfer. It is time now for Adam Warlock. He's going after Misty Knight, who's ready to take a turn, but he stuns her. That will keep her from making a turn. And it's Phylavel now going into Shang-Chi with her ultimate, getting death proofs, and looks like he's going for the Moon Dragon heal to get some more efficiency points back by uh, healing up. They build into Misty Knight, and the Amora assist to end this one. Very nicely done, Dogbert. That was probably the most loaded room out of them all. Let's see where he heads to, off to next. And he is going to go out against that Marauders team. This is the room that you don't want any kind of speed up. As he looks over his choices. Like he is bringing in Kate Bishop. This looks like it will be a Secret Avengers with Kate Bishop. He likes to do this. Yes, it will be Secret Avengers. And of course, Kestrel will be joining them. So this looks like a big punch down. 
he should not have any issues, but you never know. Kate is pretty fragile. That's the risk you bring when you take in Kate. And she is being targeted right away. She does get the evades, and here comes the big ultimate from Kestrel on to Strife. Does, does land the defense down. And here comes Captain Sam with his ultimate to give them some speed bar. And now come the troop, uh, troopers from Maria as they continue to try to work on this strike and get past that taunt. Looks like he's just going to use the sun from Sharon to get him past that strife and get past that taunt. He wants to get the uh, work on. Uh, looks like Madeline Pryor as he goes for the buff flip. Does get it on Sinister and Madeline. There goes Madeline putting out her big uh, damage. She is a very good looking character. Uh, as far as our kick goes, it's just a matter of being on a war defense team. And there goes Kate Bishop. As the troopers are getting killed. They do take out Strife finally. Captain Sand Taunt doesn't do much, but it does generate energy. Looks like he is going for the ability block of Mr. Sinister and finally knocking out Madeline Pryor. Here comes the special from uh, Kestrel right down the middle. Does land the, uh, the uh, defense down on Mystique. Line has now been landed on Kestrel. She can clear that, but it looks like they're going right after her. And he goes and takes out Mystique. The, the line is preventing any kind of pings from Kestrel. Kestrel stuck with that blind thanks to having trauma, but it is now cleared. And there goes Mr. Sinister. Here comes Sharon into Emma. Now the taunt from Captain Sam does stick this time. Kestrel clearing off those buffs. Big hit onto Emma Frost. And now Sharon will take her out finally. It's going to be interesting to see if that Kate Bishop loss will be enough to lose him this match. So at 16th though, let's take a look at the results of defense, if there was any kind of losses on his on the other side. Yes, there was. There was a multiple man loss. So this could be a very close match. He cannot afford any more uh, screw ups like he just had. He's now going to go against the Wakandas in room 5. He is going to bring in his Weapon X this time. It is a larger Weapon X here. We'll have to see how they fare against the Wakandans. Wakandans are very fast, but these are Gear 13 Wakandans. Going against Gear 14, Gear 15, and Gear 16 Weapon X. Okay. Black Panther going very quickly. Goya with the assist. It very much feels like Scorpion was trying to make the Wakandans into the heroes for hire of Crossman Crucible. Alright, he finally gets to take a turn. He's gonna go with the Lady Death Strike special, trying to knock back some of that turn meter. Take some of those counterattacks off as well. And here comes Wolverine, right into Black Panther. Can't, can't land any bleeds thanks to his immunity. A lot of immunities out there, but he does go after Mbaku, literally blocking in. That will keep the taunt away for at least now. And here comes Sabretooth with his ultimate, putting some bleeds out there. And killing, almost killing Killmonger there. Flex Silver Samurai is going to go over down, and he is going to taunt with him. Here comes Okoye on Silver Samurai, who really counterattacks. And they do some good damage there, but not enough. Looks like he's going right into Mbaku with Wolverine. Silver Samurai taking a pounding right now. 
Uh, here comes the ultimate event from Omega Red. He desperately needed that Killmonger and M'Baku are gone. Lady Deathstrike with her ultimate knocking out Okoye and removing those debuffs. Black Panther is finally eliminated and then Wolverine taking out Shuri. Very good, very nicely done, Dogbert. So half of the rooms have now been cleared. We asked the front half to finish off now. He still needs to take out that Web Warriors would be the next biggest threat. And that is where he is going. It looks like he has decided not to play around with this team. He is bringing in the Eternals. No, I'm not going to bring in Shang-Chi it looks like. Interesting, he is bringing in Dr. Voodoo. He does have Dark Hunters available to him. Elsa Bloodstone, a good choice because of the dodging. And his Gear 16 Morbius. This is an interesting mix mash of that. He has left Ghost Rider off. His Ghost Rider is not very strong. Just be see how this team works out. I mean, it's got a lot of firepower, but the Web Warriors have a whole lot of dodges. And starting right off with the Morbius uh, special. Got a couple bleeds on there on this OG Spider Man. On to go, Spider. Here comes uh, Spider Punk. And here comes the big blast from Icarus. Does not kill anybody. And Cersei knocking back some turn meter now with that ultimate, but it, the uh, Scarlet Spider dodged. Looks like he is going for the ability block on Scarlet Spider. Does land it with Dr. Voodoo. Ultimate from Elsa, killing off both uh, Miles and Scarlet Spider, down to just Ghost Spider and Spider Punk now. And here comes the special from Icarus, knocking out Ghost Spider, and Elsa takes out uh, Spider Punk. So nicely done, that worked very well for him. Was it efficient enough, though? That is going to be the question at the end here. Two teams remaining. We have the Young Avengers and Darkhold with OG Doctor Strange. Looks like he is going to go against the Young Avengers here. Let's see what he brings in this time. It looks like he is not going to play around with this team either. Shang-Chi, Doom, Silver Surfer, Emma. These are very big characters. And he's even brought in his Gear 16 Starler T'Challa, which he is using in DD5. Let's see how this team works. It is a mix match against a very good team, the Young Avengers. And he goes right for the ability block onto Squirrel Girl. Looks like he's going for a blind on Kate Bishop, does land it, and steals some energy as well, thanks to Star Lord T'Challa. And here comes Shang-Chi with a kick and knocking out Kate Bishop right away. That is going to be a huge damage loss to the Young Avengers. Not the greatest room for Young Avengers because they spawned the defense up, as did Silver Surfer. And Emma clearing off those debuffs now, trying to slow them down a little bit. And here comes the big boom from Doom. Knocking out Ms. Marvel. Everybody except for... America Chavez to Sarler Chitala takes him out. Very efficiently done. Now I think we all know what team is going to be used left to go against Dark Old, and that is, well, Dark Old. Uh, an actual Dark Old, that is. And a much bigger Dark Old. As he uh, resets it, he wants to get the right lineup. Oh, yeah, so much bigger dark hole, almost doubled, almost oh, more than double the power. You can tell it's late that I'm doing this, because my <laughs> I've been all over the place. 
Oh, going right out there with uh, Morgan's ultimate. Got the ability block on the opposing Morgan. Gonna slow down. Looks like Doctor Strange Heartless bringing him down into the yellow. There is no Agatha. There will be no invises on that side. Here comes his Agatha. Not seems to be too worried about the OG Doctor Strange at all. He was already down to the, to the red. Scarlet Witch extending those debuffs out there. OG Doctor Strange not even taking a turn, but their Wong does get his turn off and does get his taunt. Here comes a uh, Dogverse Wong now to also get a taunt. And there goes Doctor Strange Heartless. Nothing lands from there, uh, Morgan. As he has to continue just to work on Wong here. Yep, there's the turn meter reset from Morgan. Wong down into the red and taken out by Morgan. Looks like we're going to get Doctor Strange Ultimate here. That should knock out, yes, it knocks out both Morgan and Scarlet Witch. Very well done, very efficiently done. Let's see if it was enough to take home the win today. Dogbert is punching up, so in a case of a tie, he would lose. But he does not. He takes the win with 50,181 to 50,136. He will go 2-1 and one in this Cosmic Crucible. Very nicely done. Way to come back after that first round loss. So with all this said, let's wrap it up here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like this style as well. If you could, put it down in the comments. Until next time, everybody.